All right, guys, here it is. The video that none of you asked for, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So, obviously I have a firearms hobby. Um, that's clear if you've seen anything on the channel, but I also have a home theater hobby. Uh, I do other things too. So, I wanted to cover my home theater today with you guys and see if I can answer any questions or talk to you about what all this stuff is and what it does. Um, this isn't actually a home theater. This is a living room. This is my front door. Uh, so it's just a living room with a lot of big speakers. Um, we're gonna get started and talk about the gear first and then we're gonna kind of talk, talk about velo uh, velocities, philosophies uh, of like the, what you would do in your home theater and what, and things like that. Anyway, um, this video is probably gonna be super long like all my other videos, but uh, I don't know, watch it if you want to, I don't care. So, here it is. This theater is, this living room is Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos certified. If you've done any research or looked at anything about current stuff, um, you may know what that is. Dolby Vision essentially is 12 bits of color. Um, it's a step up from HDR10 from the 4K source. So it's the best image you can get right now. Only certain TVs are compatible with it. As far as I know, there are no projectors compatible with it right now. So what I have here, I believe, is the highest quality experience you can get in a home right now as far as new technology. So Dolby Vision applies to the image. Dolby Atmos, however, applies to overhead sounds, uh, immersion. So it actually adds channels to the system that send uh, sounds and uh, things like that over your head. So as far as which one's more important, I don't know. Probably Atmos, the sound's probably way more important. A lot of people don't put the emphasis on sound that they should. Uh, and that's what we're kind of gonna talk about here. If you, the, the most important thing, if you're getting into home theater right now and you're like, man, I want more, like I want something more. The most important thing is bass, straight up. Like bass is the most important thing. If you want to experience a movie, Base is the most important thing. Get subwoofers. Get a bunch of them. Get the biggest ones you can. Period. There's no arguing that. Um, so yeah, subwoofers. But that's the most important thing. So spoiler alert. Um, anyway, we're gonna. I'm gonna start and just kind of tell you about the gear first and what we're doing. So we'll start with speakers. Up front are three Klipsch RF eighty two twos. These are eight inch woofer speakers. Um, they're excellent. They are very affordable right now. I think they're discontinued. I don't, you can't buy them new anymore, but you can find these on the used market. I think I've, I'm trying to remember. I, I don't remember what happened. I had four at one point, but I ended up, I think I have about 600 bucks in these three, about 200 bucks a piece on the used market. Um, retail on these was like 500 bucks. But if you look for other tower speakers, they're gonna be expensive, especially with eight inch woofers or, or larger. Um, as far as speakers go, yeah, the mid-range is important. You can get you can get more mid-range, but if you're smart, you're probably gonna cross all your speakers over 80 hertz anyway. If you don't know what that means, I don't have time to explain it, but it's the frequency crossover. So everything under 80 hertz is gonna go to the subwoofers. What that does for our speakers is takes a lot of the uh, a lot of the stress off the woofers because we don't need to create bass here. We can focus on high and mid range and send all the bass to these big sons of bitches down here, right? So that takes a lot of stress off. So we need less power for these up front and uh, it, it sounds better. It sounds, it can sound smoother. And if you want to listen at louder volumes, that's what you're gonna have to do. Um, if you want to watch a movie, I like my movies loud as shit. Most people like hate how loud I turn my movies up, but <laughs> yeah, it's a thing. So RF-82 twos up front, three of them. You'll also notice this isn't a standard center speaker. People go crazy for the horizontal center speakers. The reason the horizontal center speaker exists is for home setups. It's because most people don't mount their TVs as high on the wall. Most people have them on a, on a table, usually the height of those subwoofers, right? So I can't fit a third center speaker there. Um, so people go for the horizontal center. center. The horizontal center channel is a compromise. The best way to have the best sound is to match all five of your speakers. If I had space, I would have five of these instead of surround sound speakers. If, well, I'd have seven probably if I had the space, but you get the idea because we're tone matching speakers, right? If all the models are the same, they're mostly, they're gonna be really close to handling the same tones and it's gonna sound the best, okay? So matching your front, matching your center is a huge, huge upgrade. If you can do it, do it. I had no idea 
how much better it was going to sound. I went from an RC Eclipse RC62 center to this, and it's like completely game changing. So much better. And the center speaker is the most important speaker of your system after subwoofers. As far as speakers go, the center channel is the most important. So focus on the center channel, get the center channel. So those are the speakers up front. Speakers in the rear are Klipsch RS52s. These are a, a bipole surround speaker. Yeah, surround speakers create atmosphere. They create uh, the noises around you. They're important, but they're not crazy important. You don't need to spend a ton of money there. Spend money on subwoofers before you get there, but have some good surround sound speakers too. Um, and the ceiling. These are Klipsch CDT 2650s. Um, they're fairly affordable. I think they're 200 bucks a piece. I got one from some guy on Facebook for like $40, and then I bought the other one at retail for like 180 bucks on sale or something, 160 bucks. So uh, well, I didn't think about uh, pulling the grill off. I don't think I've ever had the grill off. Maybe once. These grills are, a oh Jesus, i break the deer. Uh, so yeah, that's what they look like. Um, they're just a, 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 you know, six and a half to a speaker with an aimable tweeter. That's all it is, just to provide some overhead effects. Uh, also a note on uh, Atmos speakers, I crank my Atmos speakers way up. They're like six dB hot um, from from all the other channels. So uh, yeah, use that information however you'd like. So that's the speakers, that's it. Um, this setup, let's see if I get this right, is a 5.4.2. So five speakers, four subs, two Atmos speakers is what it is. So the subwoofers, uh, most of you probably never seen subwoofers like this. These are DIY subwoofers, meaning the speakers were purchased, the boxes were made, speakers were put in the boxes. They're passive subs, they don't have built-in amps like a lot of subs do. Uh, they simply have uh, speaker ports on the back that are wired to an amp, and we'll talk about power here now. So, uh, well, 418s, two up front, and two in the rear. There's they're stacked here. This is also where I keep all my pillows back here for added comfort. But uh, two in the back, two in the rear. And the two in the rear are the powerhouses, make no mistake. Uh, corner loaded subs put out a ton more uh, SPL than uh, anywhere else usually. So yeah, um, if you're wondering how I wired all this, you can kind of see the back here. PVC comes out the wall. All the speaker wires are done through the basement um, in this baseboard. But uh, Power for the speakers, the, the home here is the Onkyo 656. I got this thing open box from Nebraska Furniture R for like 250 bucks. It's a Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, 4K certified receiver. Um, for the money, it's pretty awesome. Onkyo doesn't make the highest quality products. If you start looking for home theater uh, receivers and asking people around, they're gonna tell you to buy Denon, they're gonna tell you to buy Marantz, and they're probably right, but they're, you know, they're a thousand bucks, 1400 bucks. Uh, if you want to get the good stuff. So, you know, use your best judgment, but sometimes I overextend my budget, if you can tell. And uh, <laughs> I buy things, I'm like, oh shit, I'm out of money. Uh, but this thing has worked for the money. I have absolutely no complaints. Every once in a while, I'll be playing PUBG and like, I'll get some fuzz, like the HDMI board is like stuttering and I'll turn, I'll turn it back on. I don't know, it's happened like five times in the last, I don't know, eight months. So whatever, no big deal. Um, doesn't bother me that much, but if you if you lose your mind about that kind of thing, then get a Denon or get a Marantz. They work really, really well. Um, everything on this receiver has worked just fine for me. Um, as far as cooling goes, I got this killer Walmart fan up here mounted in the, in the closet. Um, that cools my receiver. That's really all I need. I haven't had any, any issues with overheating ever, but you can buy a super expensive fan if you like. Um, the amp you see here is a Behringer iNuke 6000 DSP. So that's what's powering the four 18 inch subwoofers. Those are stereo integrity uh, 18 inch subwoofers, by the way, sorry. So that's what's powering the subs. It is a like a, a stage amp. It goes, X, or not XLR, or Speedcon out. So you have to kind of wire your own speaker wire. Um, as far as inputs go, you got to uh, get some adapters that go XLR in uh, from your from your receiver. Um, but yeah, it's a thing, it provides tons of power and they're like 300 bucks. So, I mean, you could get four 18 inch subs and a 6,000 watt amp and, and build them yourself for like 1,200, 1,500 bucks, um, you know, depending on what you want. So, and, and it provides a ton of bass, which is, I've already explained is really important. 
Uh, Monster power conditioner. I've had that thing for a decade. Uh, it still works great. No trouble with it. Run everything through there. Uh, Xbox 360, Xbox One X, uh, hard drive for the Xbox One X, Super Nintendo, regular Nintendo, N64. Uh, the 4K content is coming from the Sony UBP X700, which is a Dolby Vision capable. Wow, that looks fucking awful when I use the light. There's some dust in there. So yeah, the Sony Blu-ray player, the Logitech Harmony Hub, which is awesome, and the Apple TV. So I will, uh, where are we going? I mean, you know how game systems work. Let's talk about the Blu-ray player. Um, if I had to do it again, well, I don't know. At the time, there were no other Dolby Vision certified Blu-ray players that weren't the Oppo unit, and I didn't want to spend the money on the Oppo unit, which was a fucking mistake. I wish I would have bought the Oppo unit and been done with it, but here I am. This Blu-ray player typically works fine. I've had issues with freezing on the X700 and the X800. I had the X800 before this, which wasn't Dolby Vision capable. Um, but yeah, I've had issues with this. Sony's customer service is garbage. They don't want to help me. Um, but most of the time, I mean like 98% of the time it works fine. So I don't really, you know, it, it's been okay. I've had like three movie freezes out of the 30 or 40 I've watched on it. So no big deal. Um, yeah, Apple TV 4K. Uh, if you don't know what Apple TV is, uh, look up a video. The main reason I upgraded Apple TV to Apple TV 4K is these screensavers, to be quite honest. The screensavers are absolutely gorgeous. They're Dolby Vision um, screensavers that are just freaking incredible. I love them. Um, so yeah, that's the Apple TV 4K. The other deal next to it here is the Logitech Harmony Hub. I love this thing. I've been using it for a long, long time as well. Um, I'll, I'll kind of, right now, I'll cut in a screenshot of how the Harmony Hub works. Basically, I'm able to run all of this gear through my iPhone on an app. I'm able to control everything. It makes it super easy. It makes it really nice for people who aren't super tech savvy to use the equipment as well. Um, so, I mean, I'll, I'll run that clip in here and show you how it works. Uh, the TV, right. The TV is a LG OLED 65 inch B7. This TV is an incredible image. If you've looked up best TV, then you've looked at the LG OLED. Uh, it's awesome. I got it on Black Friday sale last year for 2300 bucks. Yeah, it's a lot of money <sighs> Projectors are awesome. I've been looking at projectors a lot I've been actually thinking about putting a pull down right here a hundred inch pull down and going with the with an Epson 5040 or Or an, or an Optima and, and doing a projector option uh, But it's just a bunch more money that I'd rather not spend and this looks pretty damn good already um, so yeah, the image is great. The blacks are incredible. I wish it was dark out so I could show you the blacks. I don't have a video, but I mean the blacks are black. If you if you get the room dark and there's a dark scene, you cannot tell where the TV stops and starts. And that adds for a really, really high immersion level uh, when you're watching a movie. We watched it in 4K here uh, and it was terrifying. It was really cool. The dark scenes were incredible. The Dolby Atmos was incredible. Really good base. Um, so yeah, um, the LG OLED is the best image you can get right now, period, hands down. Um, a lot of people prefer bigger screens. If you can get a projector in your room, that's great. Watch out for the sunlight. Like right now, if I have my projector on, this would not look like this. It would not be ultra good looking. Uh, it would be washed out unless you had a really, really bright projector, which is a, they're out there. So yeah, but I mean, I would go dedicated theater room or do do a TV and get some get some speakers. Um, what else? Uh, the clip speakers I really really like because their sensitivity is so high. And what that means is I can take the little bit of power I'm getting from the Onkyo, and these things get fucking loud, like loud, like uh, <laughs> loud enough that most people are like, dude, what are you doing? Turn it down. Or they're yelling at me, but I can't hear them. Um, so they get they get really really loud. And sensitivity rating is what that is. So. The higher the sensitivity is on the speaker, the less power it's going to take to drive them loudly. So that's something to note. That's why I like clip speakers. They also look absolutely beautiful, and they have a really clean high end, which which I prefer. Um, storage. I'm a huge fan of physical media, and a lot of people don't like storing it. I like a clean look, obviously, but I just keep all of my 
all of my physical media uh, in here. So it makes it easy. It makes it easy for me to throw the book at somebody and say, hey, pick out a movie uh, or whatever. Um, you probably noticed there's no cable box or anything in here. I cut the cord. I'm running uh, a TV antenna, guys. I bought a $20 TV antenna off Amazon, uh, and it was awesome. Uh, it works fine. I don't really watch TV. It's mainly YouTube, Netflix, um, gaming, that type of deal. So, okay. So that's, I mean, that's the setup. 15 minutes, not bad. Um, for you gun guys, I thought I'd bring something out just so, you know, to keep it, keep the channel gun related. The infamous Tika T3X TAC A1 is out here joining us today with the Kalas K624. Oh, that's a beautiful picture right there. That's nice. I need to photograph that. Uh, yeah, Atlas Bipod, Silencer Co. Saker with the ASR adapter. I love that gun. That's awesome. Anyway, so yeah, that is the system. Um, I think I have some videos of the subs working hard. I'll try to cut those in here and, and such, but uh, loud. But the idea here is you can control, as you can see, I'm controlling the subwoofer level right now. So I can tune this based on decibels, based on the rest of the speakers in the room. And that's how bass is done. So it's better to have 15 gigantic subwoofers that are that are set up and tuned properly because then they don't have to work hard so then you're recreating all of those things at a, at a higher spl so the more subs is better but not everybody is cool with this look in their living room obviously i just watched some guys theater and it was like super fancy and everything was hidden and you know, whatever it sounds more important to me obviously <laughs> so i kind of want to get these subs moving to show you why what the difference between 18 inch subs is compared to your 10 inch sub. Your 10 inch sub is going to give good bass, but it's not going to bring those really low frequency notes out and actually move the air in the room as much. And that's where the feel comes from. When you feel your shirt moving, when you feel your hair moving, I mean, the room's moving around. Like that's, that's what creates an immersive experience in a movie. So let me turn these things up and kind of show you what they do. Entryway. No. It's well, you can see the curtain shaking on the other side of the house. So, I mean, that's kind of. So, that's what big subs are for. <laughs> so, they, they, they move you, they move the air in the room. And it allows you to really get that get that true immersion and and feel what's going on, like jump scares and in, in, in scary movies, that type of thing, explosions. Uh, it's a big deal. So, uh, oh yeah, one more gun thing for you guys. I got the uh, the couch gun finished. Check this out. Boom. Got this ready. We talked about home defense in one video, but I got the. Uh, the Walther P22 Silencer Coast Sparrow on it at the ready. It's running hot, safety off. Stingers in there in case you need them. Oh, well, the other thing is, I want to talk about the couch. This couch is sick. Um, couch is sick because I wired in outlets. So if you look in here, I put these little motion lights in here, and I have USB and a power outlet in every one. This is really easy to do, guys, by the way. Um, all you do is buy the outlets from Home Depot, buy a power cable, wire them up. I cut a hole, cut a hole in there, bought a box, put it in the box, and this is awesome. People love coming over here, and I have these in, in every, every deal. I got cables to charge just about anything. Uh, this light needs a new double stick tape, pretty clearly, because it wants to fall off. 
They have lights uh, in every one. That's really nice. Super convenient. Um, man, I think that's it for the theater, guys. I don't know. I, yeah. That's it. If you have questions about home theater stuff, TV, speakers, whatever, let me know. Peace.